going to talk you through how to bandage over an embedded object. So an embedded object could be a piece of shrapnel, it could be a knife or another sharp instrument or object. So I've got three simple bandages from the first aid box. So I'm going to use them to apply a bit of pressure, but also to secure the embedded object. Obviously in real life situations, you're going to have to wear your PPE, at the very least wear your gloves. Uh, to ensure that um, as you're getting into contact with uh, blood, you, you are safe. So, don't remove the object because then you don't know how deep it's gone and uh, what damage it has caused, but also it will be very difficult to stop the bleeding. So I'm going to use these two bandages to secure the object, right? So that we, once I've secured the object and it's sitting in, intact, I can then bandage around it. So in this case, I'm just going to put a bandage around the object and the fingers just to get the first part done. And uh, once I've gone round, um, I can then start systematically applying pressure. Initially, I just want to make sure that uh, the object is not moving. And on both sides, I have secured. So you want to keep the fingers um, open because you're going to check as well uh, to see whether there is good circulation uh, around the fingers. Okay, so I can now start to apply a bit of pressure because I've got the cushioning with the bandages and I've secured the object so I can start systematically applying pressure. Is it okay, Nathan? It's not too tight? No, that's fine. Yeah. So I can still see the object at the top. I don't want to cover the object completely. So there's reasonable pressure there. I can keep going or I could cut it off and um, just um, then tuck it in or use some tape to secure, to secure the bandage. And if I'm concerned at all, I could get another bandage from the first aid box and then bandage on top. So I'm checking for signs to make sure that um, there's oxygen going through. Remember, with your lower extremities, or upper and lower extremities, any extremities, the uh, blood supply, you don't want to limit it because then all of a sudden you start seeing the fingers getting that gray bluish color, which is cyanosis. And um, to just check that they're transfusing well as well, like if I press like that, the capillary refill, I can see that the nice color is coming back immediately, which within two to three seconds. And where a person's blood supply is restricted, it will start to get a bit floppy and it will take longer and you won't get the color back. So nice and secure. We've used two bandages from the first aid box and the third bandage just to secure, to keep the object in, stop the bleeding and make sure it's comfortable for the person. Then we wait for them to be taken to the hospital or the walk-in center so that the object can be removed safely.